Hi guys, welcome to um, the One African Forum The Other Gender uh, campaign and this is a conversation we're having on a campaign on uh, gender-based violence, gender inequality and unhealthy patriarchy across Africa. So you're welcome. We are having a conversation again today as, as, um, as usual. You know, we have these conversations every Monday um, at 8 p.m. South African time. And yeah, we're having an amazing person with us today. So let's just hang on while they come on. We're just going to wait for a second and um, wait for all for them to join us. We are having a guest today. Okay, here is my co-host. Here is my co-host. <coughs> Zipo. Yeah, so Z, I accepted your... Yeah, that's good. Hi, Z. Hello. How are you? I'm good in yourself. I'm well, thank you. I love your background. Thank you. I made it well. <laughs> are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. I, well, I hope you're not doing anything wrong now. Hey. No, I'm not. I've asked for an hour. You've asked for an hour. Good girl. Yeah. Right, thank you. That's really good. Thank you. Um, so today we're having a conversation with Teboho. Uh, tell me, what are you expecting on the show tonight? What are you expecting? Tell me. <clears throat> wow. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a lot. More especially um, from, from, from a woman who's an entrepreneur in a male-dominated industry. I mean, mining is, is known for the other guy, the other gender, you know. So I want to know more about the challenges that she's facing as a female in a male-dominated industry, and also whether she has any experience um, with gender-based violence, and also advices to somebody who's going to gender-based or who's victimized. Okay. Okay. Well, she's joining us. All right. Uh, here she is, Teboho. Thank you very much for joining us, Teboho. Um, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Thank you. It's good to have you here with us. And um, just a quick one. I was actually just supposed to read um, your bio, but would you please just tell us, just tell us about you. Who is Teboho Mosito? Oh, I'll try to be short. Yeah. Uh is uh, a rural entrepreneur, a mother of four kids, and I want to say that I'm a survivor of gender-based violence. And today I'm very excited to be joining you to discuss this topic, the elephant in the room, the topic that most of the people are afraid to talk about. And yeah, Teboha is a mother, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm running my own business in a male-dominated industry. And yeah, every day I'm faced with a lot of, you know, gender inequality, you know, issues that I want us to discuss today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Teboha. Um, <laughs> yeah, we love you already. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, I, I actually... Um, I had. I love the word you use. You said you are a survivor of, uh, yes. of gender-based violence. Yes. A lot of people would refer to themselves as victims. Uh, you have come out strong and you're a survivor. That's very good. Thank you. Very yeah. Good. You said you are in the male-dominated um, industry. Um, is that the mining industry, if I'm correct? Yeah, the mining industry, engineering industry, manufacturing industry. It's mostly male-dominated. So every time they see Teboho in the boardroom, they wait for Teboho's boss. They don't want to start the meeting because Whoa. they think Teboho doesn't understand anything about engineering, manufacturing, and mining. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Um, all right, friend, I have my co-host here with me, Zizi Po. Um, so we'll just be having um, this interaction. Um, today, like, remember what we talked about the other day, uh, we, we're going to be actually balancing the life of the other gender. This campaign uh, yes. seeks to, yeah, to balance the, the uh, notion of gender-based violence. A lot of people seem to subscribe to the idea that um, women are the only victims of gender-based violence. And um, while, yeah. others, while others say no, 
men are also victims of gender-based violence. However, uh, yes. this, campaign, this campaign we're running, it's a continental campaign. And um, just last week, we had someone from Uganda. And uh, yeah, during the week, we've been having a couple of projects that, we're, that we're running in uh, other countries. Now, um, this campaign seeks to really explain that, you know, gender-based violence is not gender exclusive. And would you please just, before we proceed, you said you're a GBV survivor. Uh, would you please just maybe yeah. share your, yeah. your little experience with us, if you don't mind? Okay, no problem. Uh, I got married at a very young age. I think I was 22 when I got my first son, who is 17 at the moment. And then I got another son and the third one. So when I was pregnant with my third boy, you know, the pressure from the family, my grandparents were saying, no, this guy needs to marry you and all that. But I knew in my heart that we are not married, like we are not ready to get married. So first of all, I think we got married for the wrong reason. The fact that we had children together, now we, we had to be in this, you know, married in community of property. I'm 22 years old. I'm still studying. So... After we got involved together, I was now forced to be in this relationship where now a woman is supposed to be at home, look after the kids. You know, a woman is not supposed to study. And my husband was running a business and I also had an interest in the business. I wanted to run the business, but I was not allowed because of the culture. I was supposed to be at home while he was spending the money, you know, that we worked so hard together because I was the brain behind the business, but people were not seeing me. So it really frustrated me. I stayed, I stayed in my marriage. I think I stayed mostly because I wanted my kids to grow up in a family, you know, environment where there's a mother and the father, but I was not happy in that relationship. I was not happy because I could not fulfill my dreams. I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do. The marriage was limiting me, you know. Uh, I think uh, it came to a point where my husband was very controlling, you know, and he was very obsessed. I thought he loved me because he would send the driver to come and pick me up immediately after work. For me, <laughs> for other women, you know, it would be nice to be picked up like that. But for me, I realized that he was watching my move, you know, he was watching all my steps. So I was not free, you know, I wanted to go out with girls, you know, after work, but I couldn't do all those things. Then I realized that, you know, I'm trapped in this unhappy marriage. And then he really tried all the best to, to build me a very beautiful home, you know, in another province where we were staying in Limpopo. But I was not enjoying all the material things. I realized that, you know, I got married at a very young age and I only started to find myself at the age of 30 when I was deep in a relationship and I wanted to, to break that chain because I felt that I'm in this marriage. I don't have the control of our finances. You know, culturally, he wants to, to run everything. But here I am as a woman. I want to be involved, you know. But because of the way we are raised, we, we, sometimes it's difficult to find this gender imbalance to say, as a woman, I also want to be involved, especially with the finance part of things. So, you know, it took me a while until, you know, I think that time God wanted me to be out of the relationship. Something happened whereby now he started humiliating me in public. We are running a business together. He will shout at me in front of the employees. You know, then the abuse started to, to be a little bit physical. Then it was more emotional because when you got home, I couldn't have friends. You know, he started denying me the things that I used to enjoy. And forgetting that I'm still a young person. I'm a young mother. I'm a young wife. But I still want to do all those things that young people were doing. So for me, talking about my experience is to say to young ladies, don't rush into the marriage. You know, enjoy yourself work for yourself and, you know, just be yourself and don't allow this abuse to happen to you. Because most of us, we stay in this relationship because we think 
we are not capable if i stay out of the relationship that i'm going to struggle you know but for me the defining moment was when you know he stripped me of my dignity i remember another time he used to say my things my car keys my house my everything and i felt you know i don't own anything in this relationship let me move out let me go and start something for myself because here i'm just being used i'm just a mother i'm just making kids you know and at home i'm not a domesticated person i want to study i want to start a business i want to to travel the world i used to travel internationally he would call me and say you know if you don't come back the marriage is over and you know at one stage i went to study in germany for three weeks when i came back he said you know pack your bags go back home and i did just that and i think for me that's how god wanted us to end the relationship because when i applied for that opportunity to travel to germany god knew that i was a married mother but i had to choose whether to go study abroad or whether to stay in that marriage so yeah i took very difficult decisions and i went through a lot of emotional psychological abuse financial abuse being an educated woman and not having access to the finances in a marriage it really destroyed me and i wanted to start something on my own so it really made me a strong woman that i am today because i'm running my own businesses you know i'm running my finances and i would never allow any man to control my finances thank you <laughs> wow all right okay yes <clears throat> you got that that's really powerful that's really powerful and what i like about your story it's very relatable a lot of females are going through that and my my question is how do we help them to come out of that situation let's make an example of a 41 year old woman who have four or five kids not really educated have grade 12 or in some certain certificates and she's living she's been living like that she knows that this is not where i'm supposed to be i also want my freedom but i got into a marriage when i was very young because i fell pregnant at an in a very tender age so how do we encourage that female to get her power back to stand up to do what she would love to do okay first of all we need a good support structure you know that support groups like powa and other organizations that are helping women you know to come to terms with the gender based violence and also to be empowered with a number of programs where they can heal because unless you heal then you can't do anything for yourself the woman that you're talking about it's more like me i'm turning 40 this year i was married at 22 i only got divorced finally in 2017 and you know it's amazing that within 3 years god you know i don't know he just gave me the strength to overcome everything to rebuild myself within a 3 year period i was even able to to recover everything that i thought i had lost i mean when i moved out of my marriage i lost my home i lost all the material things the cars everything and then i came back home ne i was very embarrassed I got into a depression state because you know in our culture ne, you are married you are staying in Santin in Melrose and then you come back home you go to a rural village and then you don't you know you feel afraid to use a taxi you think people are going to laugh at you but through God you know when you know what you want in life you 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 surround yourself with women who are able to to support you in this journey I had women here at home I'm from Rustenburg who would support me you know i would look at women who would not laugh at you know my pain sometimes i didn't have money for sanitary towels i would call some of my female friends to say hey can you help me out month and when you buy buy for me and they did some of the women accommodated me in their home you know some of them are married but they spoke to their husband and said you know what this lady is going through so much because there was a point when i had to leave my kids with my mother in law so for the whole 2 years i didn't have access to my kids so that was also my defining moment to say i need to work hard 
I need to get out of this poverty. I need to find something that I can do to make an income. Doesn't matter whether you are educated or not. You need to find a way to find this thing, to get out of it. You know, sometimes we are married into these material things and we don't know that as women, we are able to do it for ourselves. So I think it takes a lot of courage, you know, a lot of support. I was very fortunate. I have a sister. My sister is a very supportive person. She's been there for me, you know, all through the years when I was struggling to come to terms with my divorce, everything that I had lost. You know, I almost had a mental breakdown. If I didn't have a sister like her, she would take my kids for a weekend and say, you know what, you need time for yourself. Just go and have a bed rest so that you can recover. So as women, we need to to support each other. A lot of women out there are still not supporting each other. They don't know that, you know, one of you might be staying in a beautiful home, but inside is not happy. So me, I always talk about these things to say, if there's another woman who's staying in an abusive marriage and he doesn't think that they can I'm sure they can. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I lost you there. Sorry. I lost your last, your closing statement there. Will you please? Okay. Listen? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry, I did lose you for a second. No, I was just saying as women, we need to support each other. Look for women who are supportive because some women, you know, they just want to be with you to see whether you are going to break down or not, they, they're not really there to support you. So, And sometimes, if you don't find support from women, go and look support from the men. In my case, I had a lot of male friends who were very supportive. You know, when I was starting my own business, I didn't have a car. Most of my male friends used to borrow me their car to go to the mines to look for opportunities. I didn't have money. They would borrow me their, their money, you know, and say, Teboko, we can see you're passionate and we can see you are going to survive. So there were also other men who were different from my partner who were very supportive and there they still are, you know. So I, this gender-based violence thing, you know, I'm not stereotype like now I'm angry at all the men who are in my life. I know there's other men who help me to be where I am today. So I'm always, you know, saying this gender thing we need to really talk about it because communication is the main thing that, you know, starts these gender-based violence issues. Thank if you there's very no much, proper Thank communication, you. yeah. Thank you for sharing your story. I mean, um, your story now actually just takes me back to uh, something I know about you. I know you have... Um, I know you were awarded by the Women in Mining in UK as the one yes. of the 100 global most inspiring women in mining. I mean, that's a yes. huge feat. And, um, uh, so at that point. Now, I just want to quickly ask, um, just put this out here. You said when you had issues in your home and you felt you were being abused, you, you had to leave the, the marriage. Now, there's a quick one here. And also, when... From what um, uh, Z just asked. Now, do you think do you think that the only way to actually uh, handle such challenge in the home, like you feel yourself being abused and so on, do you think the only way is living? Don't you think that there is maybe therapy or there is maybe what's any sort of process that the both partners can go through uh, to actually help them uh, understand? what to do and actually become better people. Do you think the only way, the only option is to opt out? I mean, that's the option you took. It's, yeah. uh, you understand. Yeah. And, and it, may, may not, it may not work for other people as it works for you. Here, here you are right now. You're doing well. You understand what I'm saying. So kudos to you. Yeah. But it may not work for other people as it works for you. What suggestion do you have for people who don't have that option, but really want to ensure that the marriage work and, you know, we're talking about home now. Remember, we're balancing the imbalance of home and the society.
for me uh for me yeah for me the the abuse was so toxic that i couldn't stay anymore i tried other options we we had marriage counseling i used to go to my priest you know we had family meetings where the even our uncles and our aunt tried to to help us resolve the issues but it didn't work so it's not like uh i had a challenge and i decided to move i actually stayed in my marriage it was nice for 6 years after 6 years it started being you know abusive and i stayed another 6 years so i actually stayed in a relationship for 12 years you see it's a long yeah. time i didn't just plan one year i'm leaving each and every year i said god can you help me fix this marriage but it couldn't work i went to the priest i went for counseling and unfortunately some of the men in our culture don't want to go through that counseling sessions so it was difficult i felt like i was the only one trying to 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 help you know make the relationship work and i was also thinking about my kids i mean going out of that relationship with three boys you can imagine uh, how they are feeling i also you know i was thinking about them as well hence i stayed you know even though i was not happy but yeah uh sometimes it helps to talk to someone go for counseling you know i come from a religious background my father was a priest he used to also come and stay with us for a month to make sure that we don't fight but we used to fight every day you know it was so yo know, it was terrible yeah and up to a point where even my parents said we cannot decide for you you have to decide for yourself for your own happiness for your own kids and i stayed in the relationship thinking i want to protect my kids until at a point where my older kids could say to me mom you need to get out of here because you are crying every day and ever since i got divorced i'm happy i'm smiling and ever since we got divorced i have a better relationship with their father so i don't know what went wrong because now we can talk about the kids now we we have healed and i'm one of the few women who have gone through so much abuse with someone but i am still allowing him into my life to say uh let's discuss about you, the kids let's do this let's do that you see so i'm not really a bad person you know, yeah. i'm still having a relationship with him sometimes you know he calls me and say you know what you are in this business because i taught you 1 2 3 because he was a welder so i actually became passionate about the industry that i'm in because i learned from him from the talent that he had i was just a marketing and a hr person and you know doing all those admin stuff but he was a welder and i learned the steel industry from him so now he keeps calling me and say hey by the way you still owe me for 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 teaching you this and that and you know if i have something to help him i help him he's the father of my kids you know i cannot i cannot cancel that we still have that relationship all right thank you very much um, a quick one i'm just going through the comments of um of um the people here z can you yeah. please read a few comments out for there Mm, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I can't really see them, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, there's there's a bakang. There's one bakang here. It says you you came with collective prosperity. Oh. Your journey was indeed a message. Or rather, your journey is indeed a message. You wrote your own story. You are a woman who echoes collective winning. Power to you, Tebaho. Well, uh that's from i i guess that's from one of your fans i would say um yeah. power to you tebaho now okay thank you um you're a survivor of gender based violence now how have you been now i, I want to go to you mentioned something earlier in your, in your in your statement that you walk into a boardroom and people come in there and they're looking at you like oh we're waiting for your boss because you don't know what you're doing here now what have you can you explain the pressure that you have actually gotten in the society due to the fact that you are a woman you understand and how have you been able to manage it how have you been able to to skill through it all i think uh for me 
the one reason I was also selected as one of the top 100 global inspirational women in mining is that, you know, I persevered against all odds. Each and every day I go through being bullied in the mining industry. You know, sometimes as a woman, people can make you lose focus or direct you to other sectors where you don't feel like you want to go. But I always stand my ground, you know. I always prove to people that this is who I am and this is what I want to do. And as long as you show people and you are firm about it, then people will start taking you seriously. And I think uh, for women, we always need to educate ourselves. You know, the luxury that men has, ne? is to study, study, study. Because even when you're married, you find that the woman is doing the cooking, the washing and everything, and then the man is studying. Uh, so we must make it a point as women to also do everything that women are doing. We must really challenge all those status quo. Okay, so uh, if, I, if I hear you correctly, see, I'm just going to leave it up for you to take on the next question. If I hear you correctly, you yeah. are saying, you're saying that one of the ways we can... Um, check and balance gender inequality in the societies to empower women, educate women. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, you know, through my, my experience as a survivor, I realized that a lot of women are still going through that and they don't know how to get out of the, the challenges that they're facing. So I started a nonprofit organization called Demo SME Coach. We do mentoring and coaching, you know, startup entrepreneurs. I also assist them through my personal, you know, pockets, you know, just so they can start their own businesses. I finance some of them to start their own businesses. I help some of them who don't have resources, you know, to go to the mines and get opportunities there. So at least for me, it's my way of giving back to say, you know, I know the struggle that you're going through and I know how difficult it is if you don't have resources, especially, you know, the technological resources, you know, traveling costs and all those things because we, we really are struggling as women and if we don't support each other, men are always supporting, like, they, they have this, you know, support circle where, you know, they lift each other up, you know, and as women... You know, sometimes we really, we are dragging each other down. You know, it's only a few that are really standing up for other women. And we need to break that silence. We need to break those barriers. Okay, thank you. Me? Thank you. <clears throat> Sister Buho, I, 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 I have a question yeah. here. Let's say you, okay, wh I let, let me, when do we say, yeah. Say that okay, you know what? I've, I've now I I want to go out because what what happens what is, happens is um, uh, I'm not sure, but sure. Mr. Ancient. Oh, yes. okay, you beg. What happened is 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 this abuse? It's 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 a process. It it just doesn't start like being worse, or it starts smaller and smaller and smaller. It starts verbally. It's it it starts with 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 threats that you are having this thing that you are having. It's because of me. You are eating this because I've introduced you to it. Like when when do we say that it's enough? Because this person is telling you this today, and then tomorrow is coming with flowers, with chocolates and everything, and then it just numbs everything out, and then you you continue as if nothing happened, and then the following day it's 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 a slap in the face, and the other day he comes with khakis or with 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 something really big or something that you really needed, and then the other day it it goes on like that like that like that up until it becomes something that is so normal. When do we say that you no, know, it's enough? I think you will also feel it in your heart that, you know, it is enough. You know, whatever you're saying, it happened to me. You know, I would walk out, go home, and then he will come, apologize, you know, buy me present, you know, become a better person. After two months, you know, the abuse starts again. And then there comes a point in life where now you also feel that, you know, I'm enough. And then there's no way that, there's no turning back. You know, once you reach that point, then you know that you've gone through
Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks, this table. Um, oh, he's uh, back. All right. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Um, I think when I'm actually getting on a call, thing, so I think so. Uh, so thank you, Tabaho. Uh, just a quick one. How do you handle, how do you handle sexual harassment? Yes. Okay. Uh, at the moment, I've only been bullied, you know. Sometimes uh, I feel like I'm not given, you know, a chance as a woman. But when it comes to sexual harassment, I believe as women, we need to stand out. Immediately when you feel like something you are not comfortable with, you need to raise it, you know, to the superiors and make sure that people are aware that it is, you know, you are not happy about it. You need to report. I think we spend too much time not reporting things and only when they become toxic, then we only report them. I think we need to immediately deal with those kind of situations. Immediately. All right. Um, another one again quickly. How have you, how have you been able to balance home because I remember the first time you and I spoke, you actually told me about the. Oh man, I can imagine. I could only imagine actually. And so, uh, how do you balance the pressure of work uh, and home? So we had a home and the society. Now you have to deliver at work. You have to do a very good job at work. Otherwise, the men are going to say, "You see, you're not supposed to be here. This is not your sector." Yeah. And also, you have to be a good mother as well. You have to raise your children. Otherwise, they're going to be like, "You see." You're busy working and you're leaving your children. So how do you balance this uh, and also not feel, well, of course, you feel the pressure. So how do you um, show that the pressure? I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Honestly, when you're in the sector, uh, one, one of them has to suffer. <laughs> uh, I, have, uh, I have a helper at home and I have in my workplace, appointed people who are able to assist me so that I can really manage my time and at least have some time with my kids. But I travel a lot and I work long hours. So at least my kids know that when it's weekend, they spend time with their mother. But during the week, we hardly spend time together because I leave early in the morning and my son even ended up going to boarding school. Uh, but I do have you know, a supportive structure, they know that I have to work hard. And, you know, I cannot, you know, certify all of them. But I really try sometimes to sacrifice and, you know, live early so that I can spend time with them. But in this industry, really, you cannot really have a very good balance. It's like in politics, you know, you need to be out and about, you know, going to meetings, you know, going to site meetings. And yeah, as long as they know that, you know, I love them and whatever I'm doing, I'm creating, you know, a better future for them. I'm creating a wealth for them. Then they should really know that, you know, they need to support me. But it's difficult to balance. It's really difficult. In this uh, business, you end up friends because there's no time to socialize more often because sometimes we work on weekends there's you know maintenance breakdowns then you cannot attend all the you know relative you know events and all that but if you have a conversation with people and they understand the type of industry that you are in then really for me it's a balance <laughs> all right um okay well um I, I take that and I agree with you. Um, now, a quick one from your experience and from what, I mean, from both your experience, your previous experience rather, and um, what you're currently experiencing now at work and the family and so on and all, your, all you know about gender-based violence. Do you, who do you think is to blame on the issue of gender-based violence? The male, the female, both? I think we are both to blame because uh, the biggest issue is communication breakdown. Sometimes we, 
you assume someone understand how you're feeling and unless you tell them how you feel then they continue to do things which you don't like and it becomes abuse you know it becomes you know a problem so the sooner we start talking about our feelings how we feel if somebody is not doing you know what is right then we can really reduce you know the high volume of gender based violence Okay thank you you think And I thing. know most of the men I know most of the men especially those who are dating women who are you know running their own businesses or women who are up there in their career they feel intimidated and they feel insecure and they don't really talk about how they feel So as a woman you think ah oh, my partner is okay with what I'm doing you know you work till late and he's expecting you to be at home at this time and you travel abroad and you leaving him with the kids or whatever but if you had a good communication maybe you can say ah oh, let's travel together you you invite you accompany each other then they can see the type of work that you're doing then it limits you know all the tension amongst you guys Okay, uh, that's a very good one. Um, Z, do you have a question uh, before I go to my quick my next yes, question? Yes, I do. Sister Bo, I think this is my last question. Given the the the, the period that we are at, uh during the the yeah. pandemic, uh, the cases of gender-based violence were so high. We we I believe that we we all know about gender-based violence by now. but there is something that is not being done right i'm not sure whether it's the system or it's what because people are not being arrested cases are being dropped what is it that you think we are doing wrong is it us the reporters or is it the system failing us as usual what is it that we can do uh firstly is the system which is failing us secondly is as the society not supporting you know the people who want to talk about their abuse because sometimes when you raise your voice and say i'm being abused people might not see it as abuse so we really need to like you know talk about all those challenges yeah okay Uh thank you. Um, uh, Z, that I, I won't allow that to be your last question. You should think about it. You should start preparing your next question. How is it? I think also because you know, we only talk about in our society we only talk about it if something wrong happens and then people start to talk about it in Twitter, in the Instagram. But if honestly speaking one of your friend were to approach you and say, "I'm in this toxic relationship. What are you going to do?" Yeah, we're losing her. All right, thank you. Welcome back. Um you actually we actually lost you for a second. Oh no, not a quick one from what I'm I'm just a follow-up question from what Z um uh asked. I mean, I had a conversation with um some uh some experts some time ago on this GBV case. I mean, they are activists on these things in in Africa. And one of one of the point that they raised, I just want to put it put out there if you agree with her uh is she said that when these cases are reported right and well the the authorities about follow it up and so on all of a sudden the cases go back again and then they go withdraw the case you know these same people who have been abused maybe for whatever reason for one of the reasons like uh, zizi gave maybe he came back with flowers or he came with a car key and you're like no okay let me go and drop off this drop this case now you know yeah so whatever the case is now and then she suggested that once the case of gender based violence is reported it should then be taken out of the hands of uh the one who reported it and then the, the yeah. state should take it, yeah. take it over the state should investigate it if they investigate and nothing is there then it's fine if they investigate and something is there then they should prosecute so what she is saying is once the case is reported it should be taken immediately out of the hands of whoever reported it so that they don't have to go back again and say i'm taking it out because that is actually a cycle that is uh, um that is actually being made there so do you agree with that um yeah, school of thought that, 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 that the state that take it off that's yeah the state should just take it up immediately it is reported do you agree with that 
Yes, I agree with that. Yes, agree. Because even myself, I used to go to the police station and report a case of domestic violence. And the following day, he gives me money and he say, "Hey, don't worry, I'm going to buy you a car. Sorry about that. What what?" And then I go back to the police station and I I cancel. Yeah. So. Hey, oh, okay. So you're one of those yeah. my friend talked about. All right, quickly. And, and uh, I think how- also because uh, in my case, he, he was even friends with the police officers. So you find that uh, the person who's abusing you uh, is known to the police, and they say, "Ah, you guys, oh, not you again." Yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's so that's so bad. However, do you think we can end gender-based violence? In let's start from South Africa because South Africa actually tops and ranks in the world the case of gender-based violence. And if you look at Africa, the case the cases keep increasing. I mean, from the statistics I get from different countries, it is just increasing by the day. Now, do you think? And we have to do something about it. But now, this is the question: Do you think we can end gender-based violence? Yes, I think so. How? I think if we can give especially uh both the women and the men if we can give you know all the gender tools to empower themselves to say this is how you deal with the situation if you are like for example a lot of men are going through a lot of anger so they should go for anger management you know and when we go to schools now they focus more on girls they should also focus on boys because some of these boys are raised you know from homes where there's a lot of violence and all that so we we as a society should really balance the equation we shouldn't just focus on girls only or boys only we should really empower each other and you know have these dialogues you know from 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 a very young age you know i think our next generation will grow up knowing that you know gender based violence is not is not right and really we can reduce it thank you very much and that that takes me to my next point now i mean what you just said and uh, which is something i will actually have to talk to you um a lot more offline um we as one african forum we we actually have launched or rather we are launching a project okay to see how we can end the cycle and one of the things you said is just you know teach this younger generation and teach them early you know and so that is what yeah. our project that's what our project is targeted at Right, we, that's the project is actually targeted at a more at a uh, much younger generation, you know. And then, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about it. But do you think? Do you agree that such issues should be discussed in schools, particularly in the younger grades? Let's say from grade three, four, or whatever grade. Should you think the cases of uh, issues of gender-based violence should be discussed? Uh, and yeah, should it be? Should it? Do you think? Do you? Will you propose it to be part of the curricula, the school's curricula? Yes, most definitely. Because you see, nowadays there's a lot of bullying at schools. You know, because most of those kids they come from you know families where there's a lot of abuse, you know, fighting and all that. So we should start it from a very young age. We teach the the boys how to speak to girls, and we teach the girls how to stand up for themselves, and you know. we just teach them how to to have you know the right conversation without fighting you know without shouting at each other yeah you are phenomenal thank you very much um you're thank amazing you. now i'll just quickly read some of the comments uh, here someone said uh, abusers must be blamed for abuse we cannot be a society that believes that victims are the are at fault cause of miscommunication between both genders so the abusers must be blamed for abuse i think this is actually picking on what you said earlier when you said that one of the reasons for gender based uh, issue is because of miscommunication and i did understand what you said completely i'm sure this yeah. person didn't get it would you please just explain let again me, because let me yeah this you, uh, what example from from the side of my story you know i went through financial abuse emotional abuse psychological abuse then as a woman you know as a married wife i was supposed to say to my husband at the end of the month we draw up a budget and this is what is needed at home and you give me the money or we go together we go and buy things but i was married in a culture whereby i needed to write a grocery list and he comes with things and then you can imagine 
I want a testy rice and he brings something else. So I found it's abuse because now you are forcing the woman to eat something that she doesn't like. So it's a communication breakdown. You know, small things. I mean, during the lockdown, eh? During the lockdown, one of the abusive behaviors that women went through like men forcing us to watch soccer the whole day we didn't have the remote oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, it's a because as a woman you also want to watch your own programs and you think uh we don't have you know time to watch tv and you you were you were watching tv the whole day while we were cooking we were watching we were looking after kids doing all those things so we need to communicate and say let's help each other i feel burned out help me to 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 you know to bath the kids help me to 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 help the kids with google classroom so the women are mostly doing everything you know we need men to understand that in order to stop this gender based violence thing you need to help us so that we can stop shouting and yeah because you also feel like we are abusing you and you are not saying what you want so you need to communicate with us to say hey tevoko this is how i want to be treated and if you don't talk about it then we we all treat it uh, treat each other the way Yeah, you see because now I have uh I'm a mother to three boys and one girl and the girl is 4 year old. So I need to teach them at a very young age otherwise they're going to abuse the girl. So for me I'm teaching them about gender to say we are all equal here in the house we are going to wash the dishes there's no the boys are not washing only the girls are washing so they need to know at a very young age that everyone is doing something in the house and we are helping each other so i think we really need to just teach them teach them this is how you want it to be and uh like you're saying I'm one person I like I like to read newspapers I like to read magazines when I get home I I like to to check you know my laptop and all that sometimes I forget people need to eat supper <laughs> so they must learn how to cook supper <laughs> So yeah it you should do what you like you know and you must have have that plan have that communication to say guys I can do 1 2 3 but this I cannot do like i can wash but i cannot iron so if nobody is willing to help you then you should hire someone and you should pay the person to help you in the house so that you can stop this gender based violence where women are supposed to do everything so yeah that's how Thank i believe uh, we can yeah another comment yeah. here do you have a comment there, please read yeah there is a comment an interesting one too We see what it says that yes I feel we should deal with both genders in a mental way to understand what triggers their emotions. So h- how do we go about this one? Because I think it's it's a big fish in the sea that we we, we are not really focusing on these people who are, who are victimizing other people whether it's a male or it's a female they've got issues. How do we help them to 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 heal from those issues or to speak about those issues? I think nowadays even in the workplace there's programs in place like employee wellness programs whereby you know you you get to to talk about you know your challenges so I don't know when you you know start a relationship you need to have something like you know a quiz where you ask yourself you know what do you like what you don't like then you know this will cause a problem in the future and all that Okay, thank you very much. Um yeah, it's this supposed to be a very good structure there. I'm reading the next one. Okay, yeah, there's a question here. This is a very important one. Doesn't life orientation deal with societal issues? I believe life orientation is one of the um subject that that's that taught at schools. Does it really deal with societal issues? The core 
Not the life orientation that I did. <laughs> well, no. That's the one you did, right? <laughs> it doesn't, no. right? Okay. Yeah, no, no it doesn't. Yeah. Now, does it? No, I think now also because, you know, currently we are now even living under COVID, you know, the new normal. You know, there's so many challenges that we are facing as society. We don't even know how to deal with what we are going through. So I think society as a whole, we need to start learning how to cope with all this anger, you know, all these things that we are bottling inside. I think for us, having conversations like this can really help, you know, society to change their mindset. You know, we, we need to have more of these dialogues, more of these conversations where people are able to, to talk about their experiences and some are able to just listen. And after listening, they will really change their mindset because some of them, they didn't know that they are actually abusing their, their partners. But by listening to our stories, then they can change their mindset. Thank you very much. Another comment quickly says, I totally agree with GBV being taught at schools. Yes, that's the, that's the truth. You, you are very right. And if there's anything you can do about that, maybe just to support, um, I mean, with your ideas, please, um, Judith, just inbox us, inbox One African Forum, and uh, yeah, we'll contact you and just see how we can, you know, discuss more on that idea uh, and whatever uh, comes after. Another one again quickly says, yeah, please, Judith, that's important. Another one quickly says, um, says here, Yes, I feel we should deal with both. Okay, that's it. I think I passed that again. Sadly, our society would rather teach a girl child how to avoid being raped than teaching a boy child not to rape. Hmm. Mm. Okay. That's what it's Comment on that? Any comment? No, I was actually going to ask Sister Buho about, about this comment. Uh, she, system where you are a mother to, to two beautiful teenage boys. How do you teach, like, how, what conversations are you having with them about rape, about sexual harassment, about sexual assault? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I could see her network is, okay, yeah, yeah. she's back, right now. Um, I think uh, for me, I I'm very lucky that my kids are, are more technologically advanced, so they are always on the internet. They, even some of the things, if I'm afraid to talk about them, they already see them on the internet, and they do ask me questions, and I'm very open and honest with them. You know, we have a very good relationship. I talk to them, and... I, I, I'm one person, I go and host these uh, gender balance workshops. So I go with my kids so they know what I'm doing and what I'm passionate about. And I always teach them to say, this is how you speak to women and this is how you should behave as a boy. And also when you, you know, interact with other boys, this is how you should behave so that, you know, you don't be, become a bully at school or you don't abuse other ladies because one day they are going to be, you know, the, the young men, the, the men who are going to have wives. So I really need to, to have this kind of conversations with them so that they can be, you know, better men. They don't have to, you know, start being aggressive because when they were growing up, all they could see was, you know, violence. Yeah. But it is difficult. Yeah. Well, it's challenging, and I know you, you, you're handling it right uh, just well, and um, I wish you all the best, you know. Uh, yes, miscommunication, yeah. I'm reading a comment here. Yes, miscommunication as well is a factor for these. Okay, thank you. Another one here says, I feel, I feel recently education has been about progressing to the next grade and not learning at this, at this stage. People don't practice what they have learned in LO, in life orientation. Oh, I think that is actually uh, pointing out to the fact that we disagree that such core issues are not being taught uh, at schools. And so this person is saying that it's because people really don't practice it, not because they are not taught. Well, I think from, from what we have gathered and from the information around, life orientation does not really deal with core issues like these. 
And um, we, we, we will need to see how we can incorporate it in the system, in the educational system, you know, so that the issues of gender-based violence is discussed. Um, Teboho, okay, that's somebody just saying hello to you. Uh, so yes, thank you. We'll be having, I mean, we're, we're wrapping up in a few minutes. If there's any other question, uh, you can quickly just drop it off. So Teboho, thank you very much. You have been able to share with us how you think we can um, uh, and gender-based violence. And thank you so much for actually sharing your story with us. It is um, it's actually very, very important. As a matter of fact, if there's anyone listening out there um, and you want to share your story, I saw somebody trying to come on live with us. I just wasn't sure why. That's why I didn't include you in the, in the live. Uh, if, you, if you really want to share your story with us, please just visit our website at oneafricanforum.org and um, go just navigate to the white DG, uh, the events and campaign, and then go to the other gender. There's a link there where you can share your stories. Click on that link. It takes you to a page. You can type your stories and just share your story there. It's, if you want it anonymous, it will be anonymous as well. And if you have a short video, because now we're busy compiling videos. A member of my team is actually doing grant compiling videos of people sharing their stories and so on. If you really want to share your story and you, you, you don't mind, you know, putting your face out there and letting people know um, what you have actually survived, uh, please just make that short video video and uh, send it to our email you'll find it there on our on uh, on this our one african forum page or hit us in our inbox and i will send you a whatsapp number to drop that video uh, and so yeah and um, yes thank you very much so please guys we really want you all to share your stories uh, z i really want to appreciate you for taking out an hour from work to actually come join this conversation with uh table ho table ho uh, your closing remarks <laughs> closing <laughs> Just yeah, in closing, uh, I, 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 I think we need to have another session where we talk about, you know, gender-based violence and bullying in a corporate world. I just don't want to scare the young, you know, the young ladies who are starting work. Uh, but uh, as men, you must learn to allow women to lead, you know. We must put our cultural differences aside and allow women to get promoted at work. I see a lot of men being promoted, but women are hardly promoted. You know, they always say, we don't have, have enough experience, you know. They always say women are not capable to lead companies. So you need to know that this is, you know, abuse. You must stop that. Allow women to lead you guys. And because women have this, you know, powerful emotional that's really, intelligence. Yeah, that's true. Yes. And, and, you know, women are, you know, really, if you put a woman in front, you are going to prosper. I'm telling you. I subscribe to that <laughs> idea as well. I subscribe to that. <laughs> I do subscribe to that. But that's thank very you so much. It was a pleasure being yeah, on the program today. And yeah, I'm always available, looking forward to our next session. And yeah, I hope that we can host this, you know, every month until we see a reduction of the gender-based violence rate in South Africa. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. We are working on it. I'll, um, I'll reach out to you again and let you know when we'll have a conversation with you again. I'd like to have you on again. And also we'll have to discuss further on some of the campaigns that we are running. Uh, I mean, on ground to actually end this problem, you know? We'll talk about it. I really want to yeah. thank you for your passion. I really want to thank you for everything. And yeah, it's been such an interesting session. Thank you, Z. Thank you, Teboho. God bless you all. Thank I'll you. see you all again. Thank you. It's been a nice one. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs>